This podcast is shared for the purposes of information only. This discussion does not reflect a direct or implied endorsement by Municipal World or its members. Hello, and thanks for tuning in. From Municipal World, I'm Greg Crone. This is the MW Shares podcast, where we share the stories of communities from coast to coast to coast. These are the stories of local government, the celebrations of success, the sharing of lessons learned, the cautionary tales, and the keen insights into what lies ahead for municipalities. Hey everybody, it's Greg from Municipal World, and we're here at the Western Cities HR Conference in Edmonton, Alberta. And our guest now is Dr. Matthew Chow. Dr. Chow is Chief Mental Health Officer for TELUS Health. So Matthew, welcome. Thanks for having me today. I think it's very timely that we're, we're talking uh, here at the conference because it's actually uh, Mental Health Awareness Week uh, in Canada. Absolutely. Um, and it's it's been interesting to see the evolution of that week. I remember a time in my career when you know people didn't talk as much about mental health. There's still a lot of stigma. And now, you know, when, when Mental Health Awareness Week rolls around, like everybody's talking about it. People are on Twitter yeah. on it. They're yeah. on Facebook. They're- well, that's where I noticed that I saw Sophie Gregoire Trudeau um, post on Instagram just before we began talking. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. So that so it's it's great to see that uh, that awareness and it's a yeah it's a it's a it's a happy coincidence that it, that this week is Mental Health Awareness Week. Yeah. So um, I, as I mentioned before, uh, I, perhaps it's my own ignorance, but I wasn't aware that Telus was involved in this this sphere of uh, of mental me- mental health. So maybe we could talk a little bit about uh, how that came to be. Yeah, so let me share with you a little bit more about Telus Health. So Telus Health is Canada's largest digital health company, mm-hmm. and in fact, it is one of the world's largest providers of mental, physical, and financial well-being services in the world. Mm-hmm. And we know that uh, a lot of Canadians don't necessarily associate Telus with with health, mm-hmm. um, and for for a large part, that's also because we're involved a lot in the background. We, you know, for example, support family doctors by providing electronic medical records for their practices. Mm -hmm. Uh, We support pharmacies by providing um, back-end services to to assist with pharmaceutical service delivery. Uh, You know, we also now provide direct service uh, delivery, healthcare delivery. You know, more than 2 million people, for example, have downloaded the TELUS Health MyCare app and they're accessing, you know, doctors and nurses and counselors through the app. Great. Um, And we also have a very large uh, retirement benefits uh, solutions business as, as well as other businesses and that are, that are relating to health. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Well, maybe we should, this is a good time to maybe talk a little bit about your personal journey. I think it's pretty interesting how you came to, to be in this role in the first place. So tell, let's talk about that a bit. Yeah. So I've, I've taken a, you know, a kind of unique path into this role as chief mental health officer. So I, you know, I started uh, training in medicine in Alberta uh, and then so, uh, specialized in psychiatry, which is the medical science of uh, mental health. And, sure. and I did that at the University of British Columbia, worked at BC Children's um, as one of my first gigs out of, uh, out of the residency training. And when I was at BC Children's, and this was way before, you know, virtual and digital care became popular, yes. you know, I, I, I helped start up a, um, a, a digital mental health service. And so we'd use high definition video to reach out from Vancouver into rural and remote areas all throughout British Columbia. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was a novelty back then. The other, the other thing that we pioneered is we actually did that into people's homes. Yeah. And that was a first because before you'd have to go into a hospital to actually do any type of telemedicine. And with our program, we actually made it possible for you to do that in your home. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I remember even one time seeing somebody in their, in their car. <laughs> so, you know, which is today pretty normal. That yeah, you know, everyone's that, got that, a story. Everyone's got a story like that. You know, yeah. someone tried to do a bit, vi- visit on the bus, you know, the other day. <laughs> um but back then it it wasn't. So I, I did that work at children's for a while. Then I branched out into community practice and I worked in a suburb called Maple Ridge, started up a youth mental health clinic, phenomenal community of Maple Ridge. You know, they fundraised, you know, at the at the high schools, at bake sales got this youth clinic going. Eventually, um, the, the, it became part of the government funded, uh, foundry, uh, clinic, clinic model. Um, and then I, and then I branched out once more, got involved in medical politics, uh, even ran for president of the provincial medical association. I won that election, became president. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, and I did, th- and I served that term, you know, as president, we served one year terms at doctors of BC. I served that term 
right in the middle of the pandemic. <laughs> I, certainly, I was not expecting a pandemic. No. I was not expecting my 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 um, my year to be completely colored by that and dominated right. by that. But it was a it was a unique experience. And having finished that, you know, um, you know, I, I was actually going to go and take a really long vacation. And uh, actually, an opportunity at Telus uh, arose. And when I learned more about that opportunity, I just there was no way I could say no to this opportunity to have a national and global impact. And so now here I am. Fantastic. So, what what is your vision then in this role? How do, how do you want to sort of take Telus to the the next? Yeah. So overall, as a company, Telus Health aims to be the world's most trusted well-being company. And when it comes to mental health, how uh, you know our goal for mental health and, and you know, my professional ambition with it is to revolutionize the way that we provide mental health and well-being services. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had um, a career where we started with patients sitting on a couch, having hourly therapy sessions. Right. And in fact, for a lot of people, when they think about mental health, that's what they think about. Yes. They think about a doctor who's sitting next to a couch, patients on the couch, and they're talking about their feelings to the doctor. That's yeah. what mental health looks like to a lot of people. Sure. But mental health and well-being is so much more than that. And we certainly learned that during the pandemic. It's about um, getting access to digital therapies. Mm. It's about texting and chatting. It's about getting some coaching. It's about care navigation. It's about counseling as well um, and, and traditional therapeutic elements. And it's also about a blend of receiving help and support digitally, but also in person. We cannot forget the importance of having face-to-face just like we are right now, sure. interactions, because those are really important for mental health and well-being. And so we're, our goal is to revolutionize that, and we are revolutionizing, uh, re revolutionizing that and investing heavily in that in mental health here in Canada, in the United States, and, and actually increasingly globally as well. Wow. So you, you mentioned the pandemic. Uh, you, you had a, like, kind of a front row perch there. Like, what, how, how does your view of the, of the medical system and mental health uh, uh, care has changed as a result of that experience uh, coming through the pandemic like that. Wow, You're... that's a that's a that's a big question. <laughs> yeah. So, what I learned is that there are a lot of heroic people in the healthcare system keeping it going, helping mm -hmm. people every day, but we can't keep it up like that. Mm -hmm. It's not sustainable. We've mm -hmm. we've seen, especially in Canada, where now we're seeing endless worker shortages, healthcare worker shortages not enough family doctors, not enough access to primary care, long waits for surgery, long waits for specialist services. What we're seeing is that our system was not sustainable and COVID-19 just shone a really, really bright light on that mm -hmm. unsustainability. And that's why, right. that's one of the reasons why I'm doing what I'm doing. That's one of the biggest reasons why TELUS Health is doing what it's doing is we look at that and go, you know what, this needs to change. We need to change the healthcare system. This virus showed us that everything about healthcare needs to be different. Mm -hmm. it, and uh, maybe it's overreaching, but it's, it seems that uh, the, the pandemic helped to uh, expose, if it wasn't already exposed, the, the importance of mental health and maybe Absolutely. perhaps destigmatized it to some extent. Yeah, it, it really, I think, accelerated mental health and substance use issues and burnout and fatigue, things like that. Mm -hmm. It really advanced that into our lexicon. It made it, it, it made it okay to talk about it. It mm -hmm. gave us permission to be vulnerable right. about mental health issues. And as you mentioned earlier, now we've got famous people, got politicians, athletes, you know, all talking about their mental health. Yes. And, it's, and it's giving all of us permission to talk about our mental health and more than just talk, also take action. Mm -hmm. to actually support one another, to make sure that people have access to services. I've been really impressed at how much governments, employers, organizations, and individuals and communities have stepped up now to address that need. And, you know, TELUS Health is, is right there alongside them. Right. You know, we, we were chatting earlier, but uh, I had this experience of working at the Ontario Bar Association and the president of the association that year, this wasn't that long ago, maybe five years ago, Orlando De Silva, he was a, a crown a uh, lawyer, you know, and lawyers have an image of having to be tough and, 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 you know, and vulnerable and what have you. But he, he decided to, uh, dedicate his year as president to talking about mental health and he suffered from depression himself and he admitted openly that he'd considered suicide. 
so um, it was it was very powerful, and there was some resistance by the other lawyers to, to that he was talking about this. But then they they got on board eventually. But uh, how important is it for people like that to to speak out? So it is tremendously important <laughs> for people in influential positions, in positions of power, in leadership positions, yeah, to be vulnerable like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that everyone needs to be vulnerable, right? Because privacy is important too, yeah, right. These are deeply personal things that we're talking about. And not everybody needs to share. And, and personal boundaries are important. But let me tell you, when a leader of, a, of an association does that, and I did this as well, I made a point of doing this when I was president of Doctors of BC, when we share our own personal vulnerability, mm -hmm. when we talk about our own mental health issues, when we talk about how we've had treatment or therapy or other types of support, that gives so much more permission to, for everyone else to be able to do that mm -hmm. as well. Um, that's leadership. But it requires vulnerability. It requires courage. And you know what? I can completely un appreciate and understand why that individual probably receives some flack, probably receives some criticism and judgment. Because, you know, I, and I faced this in the medical association and the medical profession as well. We're supposed to be bulletproof. Right. We're supposed to be strong and resilient. We're supposed to be the heroes. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Heroes can get hurt too. Yeah. Heroes need healing sometimes uh, at, at, as well. And so... You know, I think it's important for the for society and for the health of professions like law and medicine and actually all all professions, all sure. all walks of life, um, that we have that permission to share what we're experiencing, uh, so that we can help each other yeah. and and get help. So we're here at Western Cities HR conference. So the people here are typically uh, HR directors and HR managers for municipalities. So uh, why 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 does Telus Health want to be here to uh, to, um, to, to interact with these people. Yeah, so we want to raise awareness of what TELUS Health is about and what our mission is and, and how we're influencing and impacting health here at home and also globally. Mm -hmm. We also really want to signal to everyone, especially to HR professionals, that, hey, we're here to help. Right. Because HR professionals have been telling me, you know, they are experiencing unprecedented levels of challenges, right? Resource challenges, yeah. staffing challenges, um, you know, Disruptions of the labor market, uh, the incoming, you know, the incoming AI, you know, the yeah. AI revolution. Right. Uh, and of course, still the, they're still dealing with the lingering effects of the, the pandemic, um, you know, and, and then, and, and, and other, you know, human made and, 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 and other types of disasters. So HR professionals are reaching out and saying, we need help with this. And we're seeing the effects on, on, on mental health. We're seeing illness claims go up, mental health claims go up, disability claims go up. We're seeing more and more people on leave. We're seeing more and more people needing complicated return to work regimens. Um, so Telus Health is here to signal that we want to help with that because we have you know, revamped our entire product and solution line to address these challenges because we've been listening to what people are telling us about mental health and well-being and what they need. So for example, we have revamped our EAP support programs, you know, to make them more user-friendly and digitally available. We've created a, pro a program called Total Mental Health to make it easy for people to get personalized mental health support. Um, we're making it, you know, easy through things like the Telus Health MyCare app that you can just download an app to your phone mm -hmm. and see a doctor right away, wow. or see a nurse right away, or see a psychologist right away. So we're here to help. We want to help, um, you know, address these mental health and well-being challenges that HR professionals are. Uh, experiencing, and we're also here to listen to their feedback about what what they need. Right. So you led a session here at the conference. It was it's called "Thriving in an Age of Acceleration." What what is? Yeah. So, you know, this is about like talking about why does everything seem hard right now? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, my my thesis is that one of the reasons why everything seems so hard right now is because everything is changing so fast. It's accelerating, right? An age yep. of acceleration. Uh, and so I want to help people understand that we don't just have to survive that, but we can actually thrive. Right. We can actually. That's what Megan Merkel said. Yeah. We can, we can actually, um, we can, we can actually accelerate really important societal changes, changes that will make us healthier, changes that will increase our well being, changes that will increase, um, mm -hmm. you know, our, our, productivity and engagement and passion, we can do all of these things in spite of, and even because of all these changes that are happening around us. Mm -hmm. 
Fascinating. So I, I, I know you have, uh, TELUS has a booth here. I, I saw you across the room talking to lots of uh, HR uh, uh, attendees here. Uh, what are you hearing from them? Uh, are, are, you, are you sensing any kind of trend or, or, or maybe a thread of, of concern out there? Yeah. So something I hear over and over again from HR professionals is is that, you know, people are tired. <laughs> people are tired. They are, um, you know, there's a phenomenon of quiet quitting. Right. Um, they're feeling that uh, they're 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 under resourced for the amount of um, human related issues that they need to deal with, because at fundamentally HR is 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 about humans and helping humans. Um, so and you know as we've talked about, HR professionals are telling me that there's unprecedented need for mental health supports mm -hmm. and assistance. They're just seeing that over and over and over again. Um, that there's just this. A huge demand for 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 that, and it's being reflected in the, the statistics around, like again, things like disability, around leaves of absence. Um, they're they're really struggling with all of that. Right. Well, I think that maybe this is a good uh, time for us to to wrap up. But I think you you you're really doing important work here, and uh, I really uh, uh, admire you for the for the service that you've done for the public, particularly through the pandemic. In incredible. So, and and you're continuing here work, working with all these municipal HR um, directors. So thank you so much for, for doing what you do and, and thank you for, for joining us on the podcast. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure um, to, to speak to you. I'm proud of the t our, our team and what we do as a team because it is a team effort. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, again, to, to, to all the folks out there, you know, tell us health, you know, is, is here to help. Um, you know, we, we want to contribute to, to making the healthcare system better and to the health, to health and well-being of, of people to, to, to make that better. Fantastic. So thank you so much. And hopefully we'll see you on the podcast another time. Thank you. Okay. We'd like to hear your ideas. If you have a topic that you would like to see covered in a future episode, we'd love to hear from you. Simply drop us an email. The address is stories at municipalworld.com.